let's go to the to video? the video chat. She Hulk, Peter Pan and Wendy, The Rings of Power, Captain oh, Marvel, see? The Last Jedi, Mulan. All products featuring a female lead of significant strength or power, all brutally panned by audiences. Why is that? Sexism, right? Or maybe it's just bad character writing. That's not okay, to discount the. I, I will say that on the Star Wars, she's not that bad. But again, it's because Star Wars is Star Wars. Mm -hmm. Even though like these last movies aren't like the best compared like to the classics, the story still holds, in my opinion. Awfulness of any actual hatred of female characters due to their gender. This Lord of the Rings was so bad. But it's quite apparent once you think about it that such hateful commentary only finds any significant audience if the wider, less spiteful. I think this Peter Pan. I didn't watch it for their own more sensible reasons. The main reason, of course, is that so many lead women in film and TV in the past decade are just horribly written. There are plenty of exceptions, of course, and we'll talk about a few of them. Oh my god. You know what? You never played League of Legends, but you know what League of Legends is, like yeah. that game. that This anime, this not in a, I don't know if it's considered an anime, like this uh, 3D animation, mm -hmm. it's a series, it's called Arcade, from League of Legends. You don't even need to play the game. It is freaking insane and the characters the male uh, the female characters the main ones are female they are two mm -hmm. and it's so well written i i can't wait for the season two of those this is a problem most notable in disney projects as you could tell from my list but since disney owns half the world at this point this was such a meme like bro a issue so look at this what exactly makes these characters such bad examples of what a protagonist should be well it's hard to point to any one thing in particular not all the characters discussed here will share the same writing flaws. They all fail in varying ways, but they do have some similarities. A common one is being overpowered and not really earning that power. Yeah. The original animated film shows Mulan's struggle due to her inexperience and lack of physical prowess, but she makes up for those disadvantages by using her wits, thinking creatively, and refusing to quit even when things seem hopeless. The new So you see, this is like what you yeah. were talking about. So Mulan is a good example because she not all of a sudden got like super strong. She just started using her mind, her skills, mm -hmm. and then it makes sense that she became more powerful, but not in a, having more physical strength. You yeah. Know? yeah. Mulan is yeah. basically a superhero already due to her mitochondrions, and thus is automatically more skilled than Ooh. everyone else. But There's look no at this. Need for her to use her brain or develop new ways to approach problems. But on the on the movie. Mulan, mm -hmm. she is a super skilled uh, girl when yeah. when she's young. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't make sense. Like, how did she got so strong? Why is she so strong? You know, mm -hmm. they, there's no backup story. It's like, for example, why Spider-Man is one of the most popular uh, superheroes? Because there is a backstory. Ba a backstory mm -hmm. You know, he was a photographer. Then he went to do this lab. Mm -hmm. Then uh, he, he got beaten, etc. He got like the powers like that. Uh, then his uncle dies, and then he gets his sense of responsibility. So he has to be justified, you know, because otherwise he lacks the context about like w what is happening. Mm -hmm. Leaving the character flat and uninteresting. It's worth noting that when I say earning power, that doesn't necessarily mean doing something noble or virtuous that results in the character being given great power, as is the case with someone like Captain America. Yeah. Most superheroes do not earn their abilities in such a way. Their powers are forced upon them through chance or freak accident, and that's fine. However, this, to then earn the power given them, the hero should have this to is super, this is Spider -Man. to grow into his or her abilities. The Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movie is a classic example of this. Peter Parker is given superpowers through a random spider. This is crazy. This is literally what I just told you. Bite, but he doesn't I didn't know what yet. to do with his newfound abilities, nor even how to put them to proper use. There are significant growing pains as he learns to be the hero he yeah. now must become. A more recent example of this trope that was done... So, the, the quote about with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah. Did you ever hear this? Yeah. So, it's from that scene that uh, Uncle Ben... Mm -hmm. He dies, mm -hmm. and uh, it, uh, it tells him that. I Fairly thought this well. quote is from like uh, some book or something. No, no, it's from Spider Man. Oh, <laughs> it's Kate Bishop from the Hawkeye show that at least twenty people watched. Despite being an incredibly talented archer and martial artist from the get go, Kate is woefully inexperienced in the world of crime fighting and has to learn how to apply her skills in each new situation. 
relying on the mentorship of Hawkeye himself. On the flip side, we have characters like She-Hulk and Rey Skypatine. Rey's progression through her Jedi training was basically just whatever the plot required at any given moment. Yeah. Jen Walters woke up as She-Hulk and immediately was in full control of her alter ego. The central struggles that defined... The so, so if you watch uh, Hulk, mm -hmm. the, like what he's saying by the alter ego is like, Hulk, he, he, he has two personalities. Mm -hmm. One is the Hulk... And the other is um, he's a scientist, man. What is like uh, is Bruce? He's not Bruce Wayne. He's okay. He's, he's something. I don't remember like his name. Uh, so whenever he transforms into Hulk, he barely remembers. Mm -hmm. So he spends years of like when he gets man, Bruce Banner. Exactly. Thank you, Pradeep. Um, wh whenever he gets man, he starts raging, and then it, it, becomes, it, Hulk. it becomes the Hulk, right? Or uh, so every time he wants to trigger, he has to get mad or something like that. Or sometimes he just loses control and just transforms, mm -hmm. right? So a gr uh, a great part of the story of Hulk is seeing that progression since he got the accident and he got the powers through this uh, radiation or whatever, until at the end of the movie, more or less. He finally managed to get some control, and over years, uh, with, with the Avengers and all these things, then because he's a scientist, when he's he starts doing this research, mm -hmm. how can he maintain being the Hulk but still being himself? You know, yeah. so he, he starts like matching like these two personalities into one. Uh, but what doesn't make sense on the She Hulk, like he was saying, is like whenever. She gets the powers, so she can control everything. You oh, know, there is no evolution of the character. No, there's no evolution. There is nothing. Mm. Like she can control the powers. She she doesn't have rage issues. Mm. Uh, there's no struggle at all. You know. Also with Ray on the on Star Wars, it, it is right. You know, actually, the the movie itself is not bad. Mm -hmm. I I didn't like it as mu as much as the others, but um, it's again she she gets stronger as the 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 story needs. So she has like these bumps of like strength mm -hmm. without training much or without going too much struggle. Characters from whom these heroines oh, were derived are just stripped away oh. and not replaced by anything meaningful. Jen's defining character moment takes place during a group therapy session when she comes to the realization that she needs to accept that she doesn't need to be She-Hulk to find acceptance. That's right, the apex of Jen's character arc is her deciding that she can be herself. No. This wasn't so it's completely the reverse. Until after the She-Hulk persona was present. Prior to her accident, Jen appeared to be quite satisfied with her life. For some unknown reason, she only decided to get into the dating scene after spending some time as a giant green monster, and then found out apparently there's no market for a reasonably attractive 30-something-year-old lawyer in Los Angeles. What is this plot, I don't bro? Know about you, like, who me, cares? Contrived. Look, I'm not... Who the fuck cares about the, the She-Hulk dating life? What is this? Who gives a fuck? in the online dating scene, but I have it on good authority that women tend to get significantly more attention than men do on those apps. You know what? This feels like he's putting the cliche. Yeah, that women, they don't get to things when they turn 30. This is how social... Yeah, but 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 also that because it's about dating and, and the women gonna like it. And Oh, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, and yeah. I'll bet you that most of the people that watch she old was... Probably kids or men, mm, mm. you know, because like superheroes, uh, in general, they 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 tend to just you know, be a, attracting more male audience, you know. Yeah. Uh, nobody gave a fuck, and that's why it sucks. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, what is this story? Especially if they happen to be successful and not ugly. Does this show seriously expect me to believe that the only guys willing to even talk to Jen Walters are total creeps and losers, or alternatively? Men who are only charming and friendly because they have an agenda. Speaking of which, let's talk about Disney's obsession with promoting and elevating women. It's one thing to have female characters who are smart, strong, persistent, Lena. and courageous. It's quite another to simply promote the power of women by setting them up on a pedestal. That kind of treatment is nothing more than pandering and stories Bro, that contain... Bro, I didn't watch this movie, but... What is this? You know? I, I didn't get... No, it's just like it's all the the female characters oh, okay, okay. You're talking from about that. all these movies. Mm. I, I, a great movie, stupid scene. 
I, I, I completely agree. Like, there's no reason to put them separate. Just mix everyone. Like, where is the equality? You know? Yeah. If you want to put equality, just put them next to everyone. Yeah. Put them next to uh, fucking Iron Man. Like, one of the coolest ones. You know? It by separating these, it feels like it's like the B team. Greatly. Take, for example, the recent Peter Pan and Wendy, which decided that the all-male cast of Lost Boys wasn't inclusive enough, and so tossed some girls into the mix. Girls can be rough and tumble too, you hear? Uh, do you know why the Lost Boys were originally all boys? It's because they fell out of their prams, or strollers for you Americans, and were carted off to Neverland, and girls are far too clever to do such a stupid thing. But apparently no one involved in the casting decision had ever read the original novel, so here we are. Or we could talk about Captain Marvel and the thinly veiled metaphor for the patriarchy embodied in the one dude who keeps telling her to not use her true power because that's cheating or whatever. And of course, She-Hulk seems to be mostly made just to complain about the pig-headedness of men. There's a hot chick over there I'm gonna go talk to. So, it, it, this reminds me of, uh, there, there is, yesterday we, we were watching the, how, it feels like every now he's actually going into the, the same kind of topic about mm -hmm. women, right? Yesterday we were watching like these uh these react about the on, on Twitch, the, the, the scene that is happening where a lot of uh, female streamers are using their sexuality uh for selfish per, uh you know personal gain, financial gain. Um but here you can see clearly on Disney that for example, on these on these uh the story, they are all men, mm -hmm. but they had to put a few women, even if the original story, you know, it it's not all men. It's all men, yeah, because women they don't make sense for the context of like the story was written. Then you have the freaking Snow White and the dwarfs, right? You know this, I know this, everyone knows this. And they not going to put dwarfs. I mean, are you kidding me? Like, I, I feel like that's even more. I don't know how you be or is it like racist or, or whatever it is when mm -hmm. it comes like to these, uh, to, to these other things. But it is insane to me. It's just as stupid. I'll tell you why. Because if you really want to talk about these uh, issues and if you really want to be politically correct for the audience mm -hmm. just create your own story why are you touching Snow White yeah. why are you touching old literature and then putting your shit on it and then making it something different you know? yeah why trying to fit the whole yeah. story into a new agenda if you really want just create your own story but that's tough yeah <laughs> that is tough, <laughs> that's tough. Do it. yeah no, it, 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 I did not change my number, okay? That's probably a fake uh, message. Nobody talks like that. It should come as no surprise that these shows and movies don't just fail at writing good female characters. They're terribly written across the board. Yeah. I'm the spy. What? It's not just Ray that the audience dislikes. No characters from the Disney trilogy won the hearts of the audience. Yeah, Remember how true. great of a character Nick Fury was in Captain Marvel? Yeah, neither does anyone else. Elrond really stood out in the Rings of Power, yeah. right? Okay, he actually wasn't terrible. He wasn't good, but he could have been worse. Honestly, Galadriel could have been worse too. Not that I think she was well written. She wasn't. And her introduction in the first episode is basically so a how-to course on annoying audiences. We first meet her as she's being tormented by other elf children for having the audacity to think that her origami swan will float. Not only does this display a severe lack of understanding of what elves are in Tolkien's Legendarium on the writer's part, it demonstrates a cheap trick that modern media likes to use in order to attempt to make the audience like a character. Forced sympathy. The mantra yeah. goes something like this. Look, this character is being mistreated. You must then feel bad for her and like her. The correct response to that is, of course, why is this character being mistreated? For all we know, Galadriel was being a complete twerp just moments before this scene and is totally deserving of having her boat sunk. There's no narrative reason that the show gives for Galadriel to be tormented here. It's just an attempt at manipulating the audience into feeling bad for the poor, helpless victim and thus hopefully liking her. To be honest, whenever I, I watched this scene, I, I didn't thought this deep, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, I just was like, okay, bro, okay. can you... I was just like disinterested in it, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, it didn't first 
it didn't feel like they were elves because elves like are very rigid. It was just felt like they were like human children. And this is like, it is a huge thing because elves, humans and dwarves in Lord of the Rings, they act or orcs, they act in completely different ways, you know? And, uh, and for me, that was what like it kind of ring my bells. Like, what is happening? Contrast that with Arcane and the plight of. He's so Power. good, Arcane, the show bro. Opens with an actually tragic scene, and it doesn't stoop to the pointed, petty tactics of Rings of Power. Galadriel lives in Valinor, a place of transcendent peace and harmony. So the writers contrived an inane attempt at sympathy. Arcane is set largely in a brutal slum of a city, but it gives its main character a plucky, relentless attitude we, that we gotta watch the this. victimhood status which so many other modern properties confer upon their heroines. Because if you're a victim, how can anyone hate you? Well, it's pretty easy when you're incredibly smug and don't give a rat's ass about the safety of your troops. The me-against-the-world vibes from Galadriel in the first episode are just so tired and overdone. We know she's going to be right about Sauron still being around because of course she is. She can take down the Ice Troll single-handedly because of course she can. However, that on oh, its own would not necessarily this was so be stupid. bad writing. Gladriel, because that is what the show calls her, is quite old and thus an experienced warrior. I'm willing to accept that this character has spent centuries in combat and thus is highly skilled and capable of such feats. What makes this scene so absurd is that all the other elves around her these warriors handpicked they don't to do exterminate shit. Sauron and the remnants of his armies are completely and totally hapless and helpless to the point that they might as well be a different species than their leader. Yeah. It's totally fine to have protagonists who are supremely skilled, but it's a really poor choice to have the supporting characters be complete buffoons in order to showcase that skill. So you, you understand what he's saying? Yeah. It's like they are trying to force this narrative. Mm. First, they're trying to force with the with the forced empathy, and now it just doesn't make sense. Like, okay, she is strong, but these other guys that are with her, they've been fighting for centuries, for centuries, right? Yeah. So they have combat experience. They defeated like so many monsters, and now they're just standing. They are just standing, like, oh, <laughs> what is happening? What is happening? You yeah. know, and and. Here she comes, the heroine, and she does everything alone. Mm. She kills it, and it's like she's their protector or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Like it just doesn't make sense. It just makes it make it so there is like some teamwork. They help each other. Yeah. They struggle a bit. You know, maybe one is gonna die, and she removes him. You know, she saves the scene, and then she tries, but then the guy, uh, the uh, the orcs just smash the guy comes saves her so he has to be like yeah, something at least make it look natural yeah like this, this is scene so is literally the guy comes and uh it, it's like so cliche that she runs she goes she jumps she kills boom 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 boom, boom, boom and he's dead like mm -hmm. i mean makes no freaking sense galadriel might as well just be out there on her own really most of the examples i've listed tend to just do things solo it is up to them and them alone to win the day. As in Captain Marvel and Mulan, all they really need to do is seize the power that is already within them to throw off the shackles others would impose upon them and victory there, there is there. no struggle. The That's the main issue. between victimhood and total power is what these movies believe to be meaningful character work, but it's really just a violent swing from one extreme to the other and neither end of the spectrum is healthy. Look at this. There's a huge difference between having agency and being world-conquering forces of nature that only needed to shrug off the hands holding them down. If you're going to write the hero of a story, a central character who ultimately... Oh, this movie is also so fucking cool. Or she faces, ...you need to make them earn it. That protagonist needs to struggle or even suffer as they obtain the strength necessary to win the day. Ideally... I'll tell you the, the plot of this movie. Uh, I don't remember the name, uh, but it is a great movie mm -hmm. first of all and every time they die they restart or he oh. restarts i think it, like tom cruise restarts he dies he restarts again he restarts again he restarts again he restarts again until he tries to find a way to change the timeline if he can or not that you don't know oh i kind of want to watch this. it is very interesting it is an action movie but it's a uh, it like it has meaning. He has a really cool concept behind it. Mm -hmm. And uh, she plays a really cool part. And again, this is what it feels like. This is women empowerment. Is you put 
both characters, even if it's a secondary character, yeah. are pretty much at the same level of importance as the main character. And it doesn't matter if it's female or she or uh, or, or male, uh, even if it was re uh, the reverse, it's just like what people are doing is like here you have Tom Cruise, mm -hmm. which is the main character, this power level, imagine, mm -hmm. and she's almost equal or pretty much equal. Mm -hmm. But when, whenever it comes to be a movie or a TV show, whenever the the main character is female, is always she's the best. Everything is shit. You know, yeah. everyone around there. Yeah, yeah. Is bad. Yeah, that, you know? that's so true. A lot of people they're trying this formula. They would find such strength through meaningful relationships or by learning from those wiser or more experienced than them. Recent examples of this done at least fairly well. Rita Vertasky, a supremely skilled soldier having to work together with Tom Cruise's character, whose name I forget, to gradually establish a plan to win the war. Vi being motivated by love for her sister, relying on others in her fight, badly missing the guidance of her father figure. Kate Bishop being mentored by Hawkeye as she realizes how ill-prepared she is for the world she has stumbled into. There are plenty of other examples of female protagonists who match that description, but I wanted to point out some from within the last decade to emphasize the point that audiences do not, by and large, just hate any strong woman on screen right now. Yeah. Just the ones whose character arcs are flatter than the state of Kansas. Characters who need only achieve self-actualization are not only boring and lack meaningful character work, they teach us awful lessons. The idea that all that is needed for success is to seize the strength and power already within you is a harmful notion that discredits the value of relationships, personal growth, and humility. And and also, there are like these scenes that they are really annoying, and uh, sometimes also it happens in anime that uh, sometimes I kind of dislike, mm -hmm. is whenever... I understand the, the concept of you being in, in, in struggle, and then you will get like this extra power or to adrenaline or whatever. But I cannot and I don't like the concept that, for example, you are fighting and you are about to die. Mm -hmm. And this is like the most generic scene in anime and uh, in a few TV shows. And all of a sudden, they found this power that they never had. Mm -hmm. They didn't train for it. It was just like inside them, somehow locked. It got unlocked. Uh, and now that I'm about to die, I will do this. <laughs> Maybe when I was fucking eight or nine, I loved Dragon Ball Z. It was amazing. But I was a kid, you know? Now, I just... I have to see where the, the power comes from, you mm -hmm. know? Like, it just doesn't make sense. Like, there are, like, a scene, I think like, that's the scene of uh, Captain uh, Marvel. It's just, like, she's struggling, and then all of a sudden, she's gonna go get, like, this... Now, uh, and now I'm three times more powerful, and I can beat the, the, the boss, you know? Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's just stupid, man. It's bad writing. You are sufficient, these stories tell their audiences. You don't need to change. Our heroes are supposed to inspire us, either by their ability to grow beyond their own flaws and failures, or, despite being paragons of virtue and goodness, still having These to the Avatar, the last banners. odds and having to use their wits to be creative, to trust their team to win the day. Indeed, some of the most admirable oh, characters man. in fiction, ones so who do good. not suffer Lord all that much rings. personal growth due to having already attained great virtue, find themselves insufficient. This is most clear in Tolkien's work, where characters such as Faramir, Theoden, and Aragorn, great men who suffer little, if any, inner turmoil, at least in the books, are not able to win the day, but rather can only play their part in the war that will define the future of Middle-earth. They teach us the message we need to hear, the message that Disney and Hollywood want to keep from our ears, and that is, you are not enough, but you still can do great things. They may not bring you glory. They may even bring you pain and suffering. But if you put the good of others before your own needs and wants... You this is the low point for the Major Cage when he runs away from the fight from those uh, who need him. Oh, so one, in one of those loops, mm -hmm. he, he just stops fighting. You will find true and lasting happiness. 
So many modern heroines fail to win the love of the audience because they take shortcuts to power. They are elevated by the story rather than having to climb up their own character arc. They are shallow character molds created largely to prove a point or push an agenda, and perhaps most importantly, they tend to care for themselves, their own success, their own ideas of what it means to be fulfilled. Hollywood, and Disney in particular, seem to want so badly to provide us with examples of powerful women, but they fail to understand what makes for a good example or role model. The heroines they prop up are too often shallow, unlikable, and exhibit many of the traits, such as arrogance and abrasiveness, that their creators find abhorrent in male protagonists. So they try to make them they they like they are a male, you know. Mm. Uh, but uh, you know, off topic. Whenever like you were saying that most of the times people get attracted for the story, and uh, w w this thing that he said that is a, is a very uh, bad lesson to give to anyone, and especially uh, kids, mm -hmm. that. That you're gonna be successful no matter what, and that your power is within you, and uh, you can do whatever you want. You know, yeah. you don't need effort, you don't need to train, you don't need to get better. Uh, eventually, you're gonna get successful. You know, you're gonna you're gonna be the hero that you always wanted to be, right? Mm -hmm. So, and also, he was saying another thing was about the story. So. What does really connect you, even, I was just thinking like uh, an off topic, but completely related, when you get connected to a content creator? Most of the times, if it is like instant success, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, it's, it's like they got all of a sudden they got powers. Yeah. But, and they didn't struggle much or you didn't see uh, the progression. Your connection to that uh, content creator probably is going to be very weak. Yeah. But if someone that you've been following for years, or for a few months, mainly let's speak about the years, right? Yeah. And you saw their growth, mm -hmm. you know, that they are slowly getting better editing powers, betting, uh, better filmmaking powers, uh, better communication powers, everything. And over time, you see them getting better, a better superhero, let's say, and you see the journey and how powerful they are now. Now they have 1 million subs or they mm -hmm. have like 10 million subs or whatever. You know? But you saw the journey. Yeah. I feel like in the, the story, that's where it hooks you up. Yeah, yeah, it's it's always about the journey, you know. Yeah. It's never about the success in, in any sense, you know. In, yeah. And also like creator sense also. People really like getting involved in mm -hmm. the process of creator creator making you know yeah and as far as i remember whatever people i watch i only watch because and i only admire because i know uh what they were many years back and yeah. what they are now yeah exactly you know, i don't go to a random creator who is talking about how flashy his lifestyle is and mm -hmm. you know i don't get connected uh, maybe they did the same struggle, but maybe I was not the part of the their journey. And I feel like it's so dangerous, like especially if you go like to X or the, to this YouTube. Whenever you see these case studies, they say, "Yeah, yeah, you can be successful in like uh, if you do these steps." You know, if you do these steps in one month, you're gonna be killing it. You know, I think it, the yeah. overnight success. I feel like if it happens, is probably one in a million. Okay, yeah. for the average person, success looks like this. You wake up, you do it, you fail. Mm. You wake up, you do it, you fail. You wake up, you do it, you fail. Mm. One day, you're going to do this so many times that you're going to start succeeding yeah. and succeeding and succeeding. For example, for me, whenever I started reaching to a, to a point where my stream started being successful, it was six months in mm. that I struggled for six months to get to 20 viewers and then in the next three months, I got uh, to like 100. Yeah. But it's not because what happened in those uh, three months. It's because of everything that I learned in the past six months that allowed me to learn the lessons to then make the right adjustments, improve my streaming skill, improve my thoughts, improve all these things. Mm. And then in those three months, I knew how to act. I knew what to do. I knew how to react. And, uh, you know, I tripled yeah. my the, the viewership of my stream. 
and uh and, and i feel like with the stories about superheroes or uh, you know protagonists it is the same thing yeah it's it's yeah i completely agree N now that i'm watching it i'm realizing why i usually don't tend to enjoy a lot of like these movies mm. you know and uh it is all about the writing but in general all the marvel movies doesn't matter if it's a woman or or a man they are becoming so bad so bad is is all about agenda mm -hmm. pushing you know they want to be seen disney wants to be seen in a certain way and uh where is the movie yeah you got flashy you got really cool cgi but yeah bro what is happening honestly i never enjoy because especially these hollywood movies mm -hmm. I accept some they are all trying to save the world they're all from usa same <laughs> agenda yeah you know only they can save the world no yeah. one else can save the world yeah and it's the same storyline yeah same thing there is villain and at the, at the end the the superman is gonna be like super superhero is gonna win and then yeah. clap 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 and it's done yeah so, so some of them have like these uh, uh yeah. other cities got them see but everything is is pretty much based or in new york or in other u.s yeah. but so, some of them are like uh, really good yeah yeah you know there, like, there, are, uh, there are some uh, exceptions for yeah, sure yeah. I'll, I'll tell you which are the exception that you can watch one day mm -hmm. how is this fixed simple create characters to tell a story not to prove a point either show flawed characters who have to grow and change to heal their inner wounds and overcome their shortcomings or give us paragons of virtue who have to struggle, sacrifice, and suffer due to the evil they face. But most importantly, write characters whose defining moments do not come as they realize their own worth and value, that they themselves are sufficient, but rather as they decide to take selfless action for the good of others. I can't carry it for you, but I, but can't, I can't carry, carry you. you. Well, those are all my rambling thoughts on the matter. I hope we see lots more characters like Vi, Kim Wexler, Rita Vertasky, and Evelyn. Oh, that's such a great movies. character. I just realized two of those characters are played by Emily Blunt. No surprise there, considering her publicly stated thoughts on the strong female lead trope. Anyhow, let me know your thoughts and opinions, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much. I, I really enjoyed this one. 